right. Well, breaking news, and and I I doubt that that Gabe would screw with me on this kind of a level, but it looks like uh, Jaden Maiva, uh, the the six four, I think, uh, two twenty quarterback from uh, I think it's UNLV, who originally yeah. everyone said he's coming to SC, coming to SC last minute. Besides, he, he he announces he's going to Georgia. Well, apparently Gabe's telling us right now that Jaden Maiva is now coming back to USC. Uh, which is huge. This guy, uh, you know, is athletic, got a got a strong arm, young. I think he is a true sophomore. Please, someone correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, and he he would be that guy, you know, in case we were to have the you know, worst case and Miller Moss gets knocked down. This guy is absolutely going to make me feel a lot better uh, about having someone behind him. Uh, and I guess our quarterback transfer portal. So that's great. Look, we've been looking to get a backup quarterback and we've been looking to beef up the interior defensive line. Well, bam, bam, uh, twice today that we've done that. So that's a pretty amazing to hear. Yeah, that's a, that's a substantial pickup. Like USC needed someone, you know, like there was no QB two in the room. And let me be clear though, you know, this should be Miller Moss's team going into the LSU season opener. I know that we have spring ball and I know that you might, Lincoln Riley might unearth, you know, some realizations, some discoveries, and, and maybe Jaden Maiava really impresses. But, you know, there's something to be said for the reality that this team went to the wall for Miller Moss in the Holiday Bowl. You know, and M M Mark, like we haven't been, been talking USC with, with you the past few weeks because of the holidays, because, you know, the playoffs semifinals were on the night of, were on Monday night, uh, on New Year's night. So, haven't been able to talk to you, but Tim and I have been, you know, discussing, you know, hey, what was the difference between Miller Moss and Caleb Williams in the Holiday Bowl? And it was less about the men themselves. It was more about the team. The team, you know, those other 10 teammates rallied around Miller Moss because they realized, you know, with Caleb Williams, when you see a superstar athlete, you think he'll, he'll save the play. He'll figure things out. He'll be Houdini. He'll be David Copperfield. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll work his way out of trouble. But with Miller Moss, there wasn't that uh, kind of security blanket. There wasn't that subconscious, he'll figure it out kind of uh, inclination. With Miller Moss, the other 10 teammates, first off, they love him. They respect him. But then in terms of on the field, there was no, well, Miller Moss is going to save the day. It was exactly the opposite. It's we have to do our jobs to put our teammate, our friend, uh, Miller Moss, in the best possible position to succeed. So you saw 10 guys rallying around their quarterback because they they didn't have that subconscious uh, complacency in terms of trusting the, that the quarterback was going to do everything, solve everything, figure everything out. So precisely because you have 10 teammates so fully trusting Miller Moss, you know, unless something amazing happens, I think that you have to give Miller Moss that starting assignment against LSU because that the whole offense is so invested in him. There is such a great relationship. It's the kind of thing you can't teach. It's the kind of situation as a coach that you can't manufacture, like the belief, trust, togetherness, those things that coaches yearn for, it's all there. It's right now. It's all there with Miller Moss. You have to at least give him the start. Now, of course, if things go sideways, you now you have Mayava to plug in. And, and, and let's say Miller Moss, you know, gets off on the wrong foot. We, we have a, a history at USC of being able to plug in a number two who saves the day. Hello, Sam Darnold, 2016, in relief of Max Brown, who got that opening day start in a big neutral site dome game against an SEC team. So, we, you know, it could be the same script, but, but I do think that it shouldn't be – I mean, there should be competition between Miller Moss and Jaden Maiava in the spring, but I do think that Miller Moss should be treated as the incumbent, and I, and I and I would like to think that Maiava is being told by Lincoln Riley, hey, if, if anything happens to Miller Moss, be ready. You know, it, that kind of a context, but I would like to think that he's, he's coming as the guy who's going to begin as QB2 behind Miller Moss's QB1, there will be competition in spring, but like Miller Moss, you know, deserves that uh, preferred starters treatment 
you know, for the LSU game. But then, of course, you know, what happens in that LSU game and for the rest of the season, you know, that that is open ended. So hopefully this is the best case scenario for USC. Hopefully in a best case scenario, Miller Moss takes command of the team, does a great job in 2024. And then Mayava is then ready to take the keys to, of the offense in 2025. One of the things I've been talking with Tim and with our callers on our Friday call-in shows was that USC needed a situation akin to the buffet that Oregon has with Dylan Gabriel being solidified as the 2024 quarterback and the Ducks were able to convince Dante Moore to wait a year and then it's your team, it's your offense in 2025. It's exactly the kind of situation USC needed to create with Mayava now in the fold, that it that is, or at least it should be, the situation that USC has established in its quarterback room. Hello, Sam Darnold, but also hello, Keaton Slovis, right? That's how his career got started at USC as well. Now, I'm JT Daniels, absolutely. Thank, thank you so much, Matt. You have shaken the cobwebs up here because I have been waiting for weeks to hit you guys up on this very topic because weeks ago we were discussing looking at the transfer portal list. At one point, it appeared as though Will Howard was going to be a USC Trojan. Most people were pretty happy about that considering the landscape of the quarterback transfer portal list, losing Caleb Williams. And there was this thought, and correct me if I'm wrong, generally that Miller Moss was an excellent prospect, that he was a four-star guy, that he had not done anything to light the world on fire, but that he had showed progress and filled in capably in those few mop-up duties. However, the plan A was to go out and get a veteran quarterback who had proven himself at the Power 5 level. So is this more about Miller Moss has suddenly shown us something in the Holiday Bowl, and we really are putting a lot of value in that performance? Or is this more or less... The, the transfer portal list is dried up at the quarterback position with Cam Ward going to the NFL, Will Howard, Ohio State, and and there's nobody on the table. So we have to trust in Miller Moss. Tim, I'll let you ha handle that one. So we didn't go up against, uh, you know, some minor league team in, in the – in the holiday bowl we went up to a, a pretty good pass rush decent defense top 30 35 defense yep and miller moss put up those numbers and really when you look at that 70 percent passing percentage there he he threw like again something we like to see instead of making those those offensive linemen you know hold or or have he would throw the ball away if it wasn't there he must have dumped two to three passes on screens that weren't there he would just throw the ball away he wouldn't force anything but at the same time, he was on schedule making great throws. Um, it just seemed like, again, this is going to sound weird. Uh, I would love to have Caleb Williams come back. I'd like to have him every single year as USC's quarterback. He's probably the best quarterback I will ever see at USC. But what Miller came in and do, did was a bit of a shock because the second half, he came in for mop-up duty in the Stanford game and didn't really impress a lot of uh, SC fans. You know, the, the offense looked a bit clunky. Now, the problem is, is everyone goes, ah, oh, ah, that's Miller Moss. Well, maybe it was just the offense in general. Maybe everyone kind of let the foot off the gas. USC was blowing them out. It wasn't really meaningful snaps. But then he steps in uh, to, to the Holiday Bowl for, for Caleb, with Caleb in the stands, in, on the sidelines watching him, and absolutely puts on a clinic. And uh, that, again, uh, Fight on Rusty, if you guys, so go follow Fight on Rusty on, on Twitter X. He has one of those hilarious little cartoons where he has like a grim reaper, but it's Miller Moss going by and scaring off all these quarterbacks. And one of them was Maiva, but apparently he's come back into the fold. So um, I, I just, it's just, it's hard to believe that we went from so low and I, I wasn't high on Miller. I did like Miller. I want to give him his chance, but he completely changed my complete opinion. Any kind of worries I did have were addressed in, in that game. Okay, I'm going to go back and watch the Holiday Bowl. I was having a little family gathering. It was one of these deals where it's on my phone kind of thing, and I'm trying to look as much as I possibly can. I also checked on, guess what? Bowl, it being a bowl game, I'm guessing that Matt's going to follow my line of thinking because I'm seeing these huge numbers out of Miller Moss, and I know that Louisville can play defense. They did have a really good defense this year, but the first thing I'm thinking is opt-outs, 
Well, I just checked him out. And to Miller Moss's credit, None. there is a ton of defensive opt-outs for Louisville, but they are all bit players with like five tackles. No major players for Louisville missed that game on the defensive side. So credit to Miller Moss tearing up a pretty good defense. Yeah, they're some yeah, of the portal so, guys they weren't going to play got kind of I guess the word is processed out. Those were the guys processing out. No, no one from Louisville was like um, opting out for the NFL or, or 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 missing from the starting lineup. Yeah, that was that was the Louisville team that um, that gave Notre Dame a hell of a lot of trouble in their game. Yeah, so Mark, you know, in terms of dealing with this quarterback question, you know, you and I have not talked in a few weeks, so yeah, let's go through these plot points. First off. I don't really know yet if Malachi Nelson transferred out because he thought Will Howard was coming to USC or because he knew that Miller Moss was going to be in front of him. Like, I don't know that. It, it could have been, it could be both. All right. But it's interesting that when the Will Howard smoke, you know, when that story was gaining traction, you, you had Miller Moss, I mean, or excuse me, Malachi Nelson transferring out. So it just makes you wonder if he thought that Will Howard was coming in, in which case Malachi Nelson was not going to see the field uh, in 2024. But then, you know, Will Howard never actually committed. And so that leads me to believe that when Will Howard paid Lincoln Riley a visit, Lincoln Riley almost certainly, like we don't know this for a fact, but like we can put two and two together and be pretty confident in saying this, Lincoln Riley said, you know what, we we definitely might need you at USC, but let's watch the Holiday Bowl first. I got to see what I have in Miller Moss. And then after that game, Will Howard, we, we can then arrive at a pretty clear cut decision about whether you should come here or you should pursue other opportunities at another school. And then we saw what Miller Moss did. And like, you know, his last significant action was that second half of the Stanford game that Tim referred to on September 9th. And USC struggled to score a touchdown until very late in the game. Miller Moss got a whole half, and uh, it was tough sledding for him. So to see him you know, make this big, huge leap, and to see freshman receivers, Jacoby Lane, uh, Makai Lemon, balling out with Miller Moss and, and establishing such an instant rapport with him, I mean, it, this was just so far beyond our expectations. You know, Louisville got up to the seven nothing lead, and it's and it seemed like, oh, here we go again. You know, it seemed like it was going to be just another repeat of the regular season, and then everything turned with with USC forcing that turnover, getting to seven seven, completely different game after that. But you know, seeing how well Miller Moss played, number one, seeing how well he connected with freshman wide receivers who are the future of the offense, the future of the team, that number two. And number three, seeing how the whole roster rallied around Miller Moss as a teammate, uh, you know, as a, you know, needing to do their jobs well to put their teammate in position to succeed. I mean, you put all of that together and well, Will Howard, you know, could just see that, hey, Miller Moss made his statement. He passed his audition for QB1. So Will Howard pivots uh, to Ohio State. I think we can kind of piece those things together. And just one more footnote about Malachi Nelson, since obviously he's a point of interest. Isn't it curious that he was linked to Miami, but then goes to Boise State? And what does that tell us? And I wrote about this at Trojans Wire over the weekend. I think that's a pretty clear signal that the NIL money was not his focus. He wanted to play. He wanted to go someplace where he would not have a spring battle for position. He did not want to have to deal with a, a, another battle with an equal competitor for a starting spot. He wanted to be handed a starting spot, Go to going to a place where he knew he'd be the guy. He's going to be the guy in Boise under a first year head coach, Spencer Danielson. So like, that's how much Malachi Nelson wanted to play. Like he goes to a rookie head coach. He leaves Lincoln Riley Again, that tells you it's not about the money. It's not about, uh, you know, the, the bright lights. He wants to play. So that that kind of fills in a gap with Malachi Nelson in terms of understanding his thought process. And so with Miller Moss, you know, being excellent in the Holiday Bowl and the, the Will Howard smoke from December, pretty easy to see why Malachi Nelson ultimately made the decision to transfer. He wanted to play and he didn't want to have a spring battle on his hands.